Happy Friday, Ranger Nation! How are you guys doing? Welcome to the Ranger Week in Review. Woo! This is it. We're gonna have some fun because, guys, I took a week off of the Ranger Week in Review. You know, last week I had to do a live because there was a big storm and it knocked out power uh, on Thursday. So, we are gonna have some fun today. Thank you guys so much for joining me. It's the Ranger Week in Review, the show that goes over everything that happened in your world of Power Rangers and Tokusatsu. We have some big stuff. We've got Beast Morphers casting news. We have a bunch of gaming stuff for them as well and comic news in the Tokusatsu front. We have scans out, so new information coming out for Gio and Ryu Soldier along with Ultraman Taiga. That's coming out. A few additional cast members for that and much, much more, guys. I am uh, whew, I'm still getting over. Uh, I was sick this week, so I'm still kind of getting over it, but let's get to it. I hope you have your drink. Woo! Feels good to be back, baby. Feels good to be back. The Ranger Week in Review. Screw the whatever. It's just, it's just starting right now. Hello, hello! Ranger Liz here. I am your host. Big fan of Power Rangers and everything that is spandexy suited. Let's have some fun with the news. Again, we have Beast Morphers news, comic news, gaming news, a bunch of more stuff, a little bit about uh, Ranger stuff that's coming up. And then, of course, we have all the Toku stuff that happens after Power Rangers. If you don't want to know, uh, if you just want to jump from segment to segment, check out the label up there. I have each news segment labeled so you will know where you need to go. But, hey, if you stick around for all of it, you get a participation prize. Okay, you don't actually get anything, but you get the warm and fuzzies of knowing you stayed all the way until the end of the video. And that makes me very happy. Let's just get into the first thing. That is Beast Morphers. Guys, we had an interesting casting. It was found by, of course, our friends at Power Scoop Blog. Go check them out. They're from New Zealand, so they do get a lot of casting information from them. And so we learned Miriama Smith is going to have a side role as Aunt Regina. Now, there's two reasons this is interesting or really newsworthy. One, I like that it says Aunt Regina because, again, what we've been seeing with Beast Morphers, right? We've been seeing families, a bunch of families. About every ranger right now has a family, including Nate. I mean, if you want to, you know, think about Steel. So, the rangers are getting families, and what is this? Who is Aunt Regina going to be related to? I have absolutely no idea. But it's cool that they're doing more families. She may look familiar, though. As you're, you're just like, where can I picture her? I can't quite think. <gasps> Elsa! What? That is right. The lady who played Elsa who was also at Principal Randall in Power Rangers Dino Thunder. Dino Thunder, right? All the way back then. She's coming back for this role. So I, I am with uh, Toku Chris. He was like 100 bucks to Hasbro's charity of choice if they somehow can give her a throwaway line about the fact that she used to be like a high school principal or something in the education. I think that would be absolutely hilarious. Elsa, she was made good, of course, by the end. So hey, now maybe she's Aunt Regina. Now, of course, the characters aren't going to be related in any way, but I find it interesting that there we go. Past actor coming back in a slightly different role. I'll be happy to see her and please, please, just one, one dinosaur school related joke would just make my life so much, so much faster. Easier, not faster. Whatever. I am stopped up, so we're going to continue. Let's go ahead and move on to some comic news. We have Mighty Morphin 39 has been released this week and it is the ending of Beyond the Grid, because remember when we get to 40, we're going to have Necessary Evil, and that's when Ryan Parrott's going to take over, and uh, a new artist, so this is the last run of the Beyond the Grid arc. The quick summary is, after the shocking revelation of last issue, the new team of Power Rangers makes their final stand, and none of them will escape unscathed. That's pretty awesome. If you want to check out the first few pages, those are, of course, up for a preview, but we also got some art of what the Solar Ranger team would look like. That is right, in this comics, we don't have a Solar Ranger team, or we had, or we have, I actually haven't read 39 yet. We did get some really great concept art for it, so if you would like to check out more pictures of all the Rangers, and uh, I mean, there really is some great detail here, so please go ahead and check out that link so you can see all of these pictures and get a better feel for them. Uh, the art, of course, I really enjoyed it uh, for these Rangers, so please, please go take a look. I'm going to talk about Ranger Stop actually in the convention one, but if you're a fan of variant covers, Ranger Stop and Pop in Atlanta, wait, 
Is that Atlanta? Yeah, Atlanta. Ranger Stop and Pop in Atlanta that's happening in June are actually getting their own variant cover from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number 39 with the Zeo design. That looks really nice. If you can't make it to the convention, they do have instructions, though. I think it's $20, it's $20 for the comic and uh, $6 shipping in the U.S. So if you want to pay your $26 and just get it and not worry about it, you can have it shipped directly to you. I like, I mean, you're going to pay $20 for it at the con anyway. And I know it's kind of like, was it a con exclusive? Is it... I don't know, but you can go ahead and pick one up without having to go through Middleman or actually going to Atlanta. So there you go. Let's move on to some gaming news. Uh, we did get some stuff for Heroes of the Grid, and that's launching very soon, like in July. Renegade Studios did an unboxing video for some of the Kickstarter things and did a, like a kind of a Q&A while they were doing it. I personally have not gotten to watch it yet. But if you would like to go ahead and check that out, I have the link to it below. They did it on their Twitch stream, but it has been posted to the YouTube page as well. Get some information. I absolutely cannot wait to get this in. I need to watch it so I have an idea of how much counter space I need when I do my unboxing video for you guys. I'm already... I may actually have to go on location to, uh, to a friend of mine, Nick. Nick, if you're watching, I might be recording at your house. But he's a DM for a whole bunch of D&D games, and he has this massive kitchen table huge layout of everything, boards, maps. He's, seriously, if you like D&D, you would love going over to his house. But I'm taking over that table with Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid, and he's going to play. So I'm very excited for that. Be on the lookout for videos. Watch that game launches about unboxing, what you get in it, and how to play. Let's move on to some merchandise news, shall we? There are new Power Ranger pens coming out from Lineage Studio. Shout out to Raz for letting me know about this one. Thank you so much. I'd actually miss this one. Lineage Studios has been doing these gorgeous, gorgeous ones. They've been doing the more, like the Morphers. They've been doing that uh, busts of Zeo and uh, Ranger Slayer, which actually won in a competition from them. But the Ninjetti pin set is actually coming out tomorrow. Our pre-orders begin tomorrow. You'll be getting the uh, Crimson Hawk, which was from Ryu Ranger from Legacy Wars. You'll be getting the Lord Draken one, which is really cool, and the Ninjetti Falcon pen. So if you want to get in on pre-orders for those, there you go. They start to day. I'm sorry, earlier I probably said tomorrow because it's Thursday, but they do start Friday and they're probably live right now. So go uh, check out the link below and you will get more information if you would like to pick them up. Let's go ahead and go to that con news now for Ranger Stop and Pop. That is happening in June, June 21st to through 23rd in Atlanta. Now, the hotel, I've been doing a little more stuff about it. I remember I told you guys I really wanted to go to it, and then unfortunately it's just monetarily, it's it's been scrapped. There's I just I can't financially get to Atlanta um, between the hotel and everything to get there. Uh, I Fingers crossed, I'm going to be working really hard to be able to go to Ranger Stop Orlando and be able to see some of you guys trying to get, like, going in hotel rooms people so I'm still working out the logistics but I'd really like to go but if you're going to Ranger Stop Atlanta our friends over at Tokusatsu Network did a uh, preview of like a guide basically to get you ready if you are going and just list everybody who's going and has the schedule so far I hadn't even seen the schedule yet for, uh, for panels but they have that up. Uh, a lot of other pertinent information. And also check out Ranger Stop and Pop's website where they have not only who is going, but they have some prices are, of course, subject to change. But they do have a basic price list of what these actors are asking for, you know, just if you want the picture, if you want the autograph, if you want both, and the convention schedule. So get ready. I always say convention prep, guys, if you saw Thursday's video. Prep. Prep, prep. I promise you, you're, you're not going to get to a convention and be like, man, I really regret spending that hour. It's never happened to me. The little prep goes a long way. And Ranger Stop Pop. Ranger Stop and Pop. Woof. I'm still a little fuzzy up here, but... You know what I'm talking about. If you want to get in on it, go check out the links for information. And that actually brings us to the end of Power Ranger news. So let's go ahead and move on to some tokusatsu news. Pop! There we go. Let's move on to some Tokyo news. Hi, Tokyo friends. If you weren't here for the Ranger stuff, I'm glad you came back for this. Big stuff, of course, in Tokusatsu. We have our scans for Geo and Ryu Sojer. Again, Ultraman Taiga got some side uh, characters and a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, and uh, Zero One Rumor. Take it with a grain of salt, my friend. Do I have a salt shaker around here? Is it weird using a blaster gun as a salt shaker? We'll get to that later. Let's start with Geo. We got some scans. Oh, and really quick, other than the episode that just came out, like I got today, Thursday, that I haven't watched yet, I am 100% caught up on not only Geo, but 
were you soldiers like the only good thing that came out of this massive head cold I had it started I was sick Saturday Sunday Monday so yay Memorial Day weekend I spent just laid out but I watched a crap ton of Toku and I'm completely caught up and I'm so happy and I also got to watch the Heisei Generations Forever movie which is out if you need links to it I'll probably I'll try to remember to throw one below but that has been out and up why do I mention Heisei Generations Forever one it was really good two it is available and subbed. Three, we got our look at Kamen Rider, another writer, Deno, in that movie. Where else are we going to be seeing him? We're seeing him in the scans. Yes, the next Heisei Rider that Gio is going to be doing a tribute episode for is 2007's Kamen Rider Deno. We don't know uh, yet if any returning veteran actors or anyone is going to be coming back or exactly where it's going to fall, but know that Kamen Rider Deno is going to actually have stuff in the show. I was kind of wondering about it because they did it with the movie, but I feel like they needed to have it in the show also, so that's really cool that we're finding that out. So go check those out if you want to see more uh, looks at it. But the big thing, at least in my opinion, we got our first thing of the latest, uh, we got his latest form. Grand... Geo, not Oma Geo, Grand Geo. So I can't. There is he going to become Oma Geo? Like, is he actually going to get the suit in any form, or is he going to like? No, I don't want that one. I'll be you know Grand Geo, and that's how I'm going to fight him down. I don't know. I, I gotta tell you, some people Geo kind of lost me after a little bit. Going back, I binged 14 episodes in three days. I actually really like it now. Getting to watch it and watching the characters, and I'm. I know that, you know, one episode to another, it's a different director, and so maybe the styling is different, but I'm really, really loving how each of the actors are bringing their character to life in each situation, I guess. And I also went through in that giant binge watch, and I rewatched all of the point fives, 1.5, 2.5, all of the complimentary, uh, compilation pro project. Ugh. I watched all of those again, and it gave me a really good appreciation for it. Uh, so I'm really enjoying it. And yeah, now we're going to have Grand Geo since you've been staring at it for the last minute or so. Uh, the story details along with it remain unknown at this time. We don't even know when it's going to make an appearance. Uh, however, we can confirm, this is from Toku Nation, that Grand Geo will be released as a writer kick figure action figure later down the line. I, I wish I had more information to give you on this, but right now we have scans. I can't wait to see it. It's not three of them fused up, which I love. Oh my gosh. Having just was was Gates and Geo in that clock thing, and they're fighting over grass control. I almost wonder if like uh, Patrick Hugo was kind of the if, I think that was right, what it was called, but how it was maybe like a predecessor, like to see how it would work. Uh, but I think it's a really funny system, and yeah. Go check that out for Grand Geo if you want to get more information. Uh, it may have been updated by now. We also have some information for the Kamen Rider Geo movie and the Ryu Sojourn movie, of course. But before I get to that, I want to kick into a little bit of rumor for the salt. Where'd my salt shaker go? Uh, for Kamen Rider Zero One, these are, of course, courtesy of Matt Hunt, who patrols the boards trying to find anything. So here you go, grain of salt, guys. Kamen Rider Zero One rumors. The enemy is led by one leader with three generals, only two to start. Okay, that sounds pretty normal to me, right? They're trying to steal three pieces of treasure from another company. The henshin items resemble two, and I'm gonna say it's to me, giant Nintendo DS cartridges, and an electricity slash power source mark is referred. There you go, take it with your shake it like a salt, shake it, shake it like a salt, shaker. Uh, so who knows, but keep that in mind. If it comes true, great. If it doesn't, who knows, but I love just seeing the rumors and see how far off or how close they actually were. So let's go ahead and go to that Geo movie news. We did get some additional guest stars listed, and these are kind of fun because they both somewhat have to do with Kyrosier. Susuke Saito, he was the one who played Ian, uh, Ryu so not Ryu Sojourner, Kyrosier Black, the, oh my. Yeah, yeah, oh my, because he's the hot shot, the one who shot everything. He was fun. At any rate, he is going to be in it, and he's going to be Kamen Rider Zamonas. So he is, that's also, you know, that's kind of fun. Here he goes. We've been having, actually, with Gio, we had uh, Zamigos became a writer. We had Buster Red become a writer. We had uh, Star Ninja become a writer. Now we have Kirozer Black becoming a writer. And here's the crazy one. So Papaya Suzuki is going to be playing Kamen Rider Zonhijis. 
and I probably butchered that name, I'm sorry. Okay, you're like, okay, and what did he have to do with Kirozer? He was a choreographer and dancer. He was the one, like, who scripted, like, the ending dance for it. This just makes me really, 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 really want them to dance in their henshin. Seriously, thumbs up if you want more dancing henshins. If you don't want more thumbs up hen uh, dancing henshins, please don't leave a thumbs down. Please don't, like, YouTube really kills with analytics and statistics. Please don't give this video a thumbs down. I need all the help I could get. But those guys are going to be in the Geo movie, so keep an eye out for them. Now, we actually have some more, like, the teaser trailers and stuff. Let's get into the end information for it, because it's, of course, Geo and Rio Sojourner. It's a back-to-back -back movie that, of course, is coming out on July 26th. So, let's go over Geo and then Ryu Sojourner. According to this, there is a teaser trailer up, by the way. It's in Japanese. I haven't found any subs for it yet, so thank you so much, uh, Yuki Seed, for doing all of, uh, for gathering the translations for me in one pretty little package. This Geo movie is actually going to be really crazy because it's actually being promoted as the climax of the series. It's called Over Quartzer, and I think I've, I've mentioned this before in previous ones, but it's going to introduce the Quartzers, who are the managers of time, who appear after Sogo has finished collecting all ride watches. I'm sorry, ghost icons. I mean, ride all of the riot watches. A grand conspiracy behind the birth of the king is revealed. These quarters are common riders whose designs are based on riders who are technically Heisei common riders, but are not considered part of the main ones, such as uh, common rider Amazons, common rider Black and no, Black X, and I forgot the other one. I'm sorry, but they're going to be over there. Check out the links if you want more information on that. Now, let's slip over to Ryu Sojourner. The Ryu Sojourner movie is going to be called Time Slip Dino Panic. That is actually going to be a prologue to the main TV series. So we have the climax of Geo and the prologue of Ryu Sojourner. In it, the Ryu Sojourners are going to be sent back 65 million years before the extinction of the dinosaurs, and it's going to explore the origins of the Ryu Soul tribe and their Kishiryu partners. I hope it gives us a little more backstory of how the Kishiryu were made. You know, the researchers talk about, you know, we created you, and, and I'm sorry, especially with Dime Volcano. Uh, that was a really, I really enjoyed the Dime Volcano episode, actually. Uh, so that was new. So no spoilers, because it's only been out a few days. But I like how they basically say, you know, we're sorry, we, we made you, and then, you, you know, you're kind of hidden away. I want to know more about the researchers. Why did they make the Kishiryu? How did they get the, the Ryu souls, like, give me more information! And I hope that we get it in this movie. Of course, we won't actually get subs for it for later, but oh well, we'll get it eventually. So that is going to be the prologue. What we got, though, that's going to be happening in the show, Ryu so gold. Ryu so cool gold! I... The suits, okay, the suits growing on me, and I hear ya, I hear you guys in the comments. I'm getting a little sick of the gold and blue. I'm not going to argue with you on that one. I'm, I'm really not. I It looks really good, though, together. So, I know we've had the gold and blue. Uh, Shinkinger, Neninger, now this one. Obviously, um, Kiroger. There's been a lot of them, but I do like the suit design in general. The suits are really growing on me. I'm really, really digging them. But that is his suit, and apparently he's Aquaman because he can talk to Mosa Rex uh, telepathically. Which is, which is really cool. Ryu So Gold is going to be the Knight of Destiny. He has two unique weapons, the Mosa Changer Gun and the Mosa Blade Saber. He already has mastered a powerful Ryu Soul called the Beery Beery Soul, which activates powerful electric armor in combat. What? The Gold Ranger has power over electricity and lightning? What? What? We've never, ever... Shut up, Liz. Come on, just get with it. Sorry. So he is from the, uh, he has two purposes. Basically in joining the world, and I talked about this when he was a little more announced, but he has to, uh, stop the Jordan tribes attacking the Earth, and he has to find a wife. Okay. Okay. He isn't alone, though. He's actually gonna be helped by his little sitter, Oto. O-T-O is gonna be his little sister, and, uh, so we're getting two characters for this one. Who knows exactly how big his sister is gonna play in the role, but I'm sure she's gonna be off. And about with Ui doing some stuff. And oh, seriously, what is the deal with Ui's dad? The whole... Ah, uh, so like, no spoilers, but seriously, what... He's, what is going on with him? He's shady. He's gonna be... Something Something is gonna happen, guys. I'm telling you. Uh, oh, yeah, I came with the researcher. So I watched episodes 5 through 10. Back to back, back to back, back. And uh, then I watched 11 when it came out. And again, really just kind of... 
going through it all at once and seeing the characters, I like how we finally got like an Asuna. What? Oh my gosh, that pink ranger lone henshin was freaking amazing. Uh, Moat finally got some stuff. We're getting a lot more information. Uh, I'm really enjoying Resurger so far right now, guys, so I, I really am. But if you want to get more information about all of these scans that I've been rambling about, please go ahead and check, uh, take a look at the links below. We get a lot more information about Moso Rex, who, I I mean, the suit looks really good. Who knows what the toy is going to look like, but there is Moso Rex. And then we also got his uh, unique mecha transformation. It's transforming into Kishiryu Neptune. So it's all the water stuff. It's our first water-based uh, Resurger, so get more information about that. And then finally, we do get some more stuff about who's going to be coming back to the series, and that is Guy Sork. Remember him from Super Sentai Strongest Battle? That was the lead up into Ryu Sojer. So he is finally coming in. I think, uh, if you think the goal is going to be Guy Sork, I don't think it's going to be because usually they would kind of be hinting at something like that, and they're keeping them very, very separate. But it's, it's a suit of armor, and it can take over whoever, so who knows? Maybe everyone will be Guy Sork at this point. But if you want to get more information, Go check out the links, and let's move on to some Ultraman news. Ultraman Taiga additional cast members have been revealed. I'm sorry, I'm not going to list quite all of them because there are a few, but go check out UKC if you would like all of them. It's going to be starting on July 7th. The uh, upcoming ones, it's he got he has three suits. Remember, so we got voice actors for all three of the suits. We also got some of the side characters and everyone that's going to be coming out. Uh, I'm pretty excited for it. Once we start getting more information, we get more toy scans and and stuff like that. I've been bringing it to you. I'm sorry that I haven't really done an Ultraman dedicated episode with all of this new information coming out for him yet. But uh, maybe once the series starts, I can do a everything you need to know. But then again. That's July 7th, and who knows where we are going to be in a little over a month. Uh, oh, June's Father's Day, if you haven't remembered that. I hope you didn't forget your mom on Mother's Day. Don't forget your dad on Father's Day. Let's go to another last bit of Ultraman news, and that is Ultraman Cosmos. It's a little further back, but the Ultra Replica Cosmo Pluck has been revealed. Not Puck. I was very confused. I, I'm from St. Louis, and St. Louis Blues are in the Stanley Cup final right now, so everything I've been seeing on social media is about hockey, and I'm like, that is not a Puck. What is, oh, it's a, it's a pluck, P-L-U-C-K. So this Cosmo pluck has been revealed. It's going to be 8,800 yen for an October release. It is a premium Bandai web exclusive, so get on it if you would like. It, it looks like it's going to be absolutely amazing. So it's, uh, it's under the Ultra Replica line, so it is based on the actual prop that they used on the show. Uh, pressing the transformation button is going to activate the Cosmo pluck. The tip extends, LED lights up. Transformation sound will play. In addition, you can transform into Cosmos to six different forms and including the various modes. It's going to include the transformation sound for Ultraman Legend, the fusion of Cosmos, and Ultraman Justice. Oh, and it's going to have 70 different dialogue sounds. That is right. From the actor who plays Cosmos' host, 70 different dialogue sounds are going to be in it. So if you are an Ultraman fan, if you are a fan of this one, I this sounds absolutely amazing. I mean, if you tell me, like, Oh, they give you a power morpher, but it actually has, you know, you hit Tyrannosaur. Tyrannosaur! Like, I would be freaking out. I think that's a really good, uh, I think that's really cool. So I hope you enjoy it as well. Woo! Guys, this is quite an episode for coming back for being sick, but... I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you guys so much. Thank you to my Patreons for helping make this video possible. If you're interested at all in becoming a Patreon, please check out the links below. Woo! And now to get to the fun stuff of editing. But guys, I hope you have a fan freaking tastic weekend. You know I always got an emphasis. I put the emphasis on the wrong syllable, didn't I? Whatever. I'll see you guys in the next episode of the Ranger Weekend Review where everything Power Rangers and Tokusatsu, guys, have a wonderful weekend. Cheers. Stupid blowing your nose and taking your makeup off. Okay, you ready? Video, video, subscribe. Patreon, Patreon!